my friends, Christ is still risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Good morning. Welcome to our time of shared worship together today. It is good for us to be together and worship God. This is the Sunday that I would always remind us that like Christmas, Easter is a season. It is not just a single day, but it is a season full of hope and new life and joy. As I mentioned in the midweek check-in video, one of the great things about this season is that it is actually longer than the Lenten season. Lent we honor for 40 days of repentance and preparation, and then Easter season is 50 days of joy and rejoicing, of seeing God's hope anew, seeing the life of God coming into fruition all around us. It is worth celebrating, and it is in the hope of this season that I find my rest this day. Will you join me in prayer? God, the source of each new breath, you breathe life even in the places of death. You give peace in places locked away by fear. Your joy interrupts our grief. We pray today that you would interrupt us again, that you would come and surprise us again. Let your living presence overcome us today. With hands of compassion, mold us into people after your own way so that we would be people of peace, of joy, of forgiveness in the world today. Through the power of Christ who offers his victory as our own, we pray before you. Amen. My friends, now as we come and enter into this time, let us do so singing that song that grounds us week after week as children of God. We sing, I am a child of God together now. our scripture reading this morning picks up the story of Jesus appearing to his first disciples. Last week he appeared to Mary outside the tomb, and now we hear the story of Jesus appearing to his other disciples locked away in their room. Hear this story as John tells it. We read from John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23. It was still the first day of the week. That evening, while the disciples were behind closed doors because they were afraid of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them. He said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. When the disciples saw the Lord, they were filled with joy. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you don't forgive them, they are not forgiven. We give thanks for the word of God for us this day. Thanks be to God. 
I remember when I was a kid, I had this reoccurring nightmare. It was snakes everywhere over and over and over again. I had seen a scene from a movie that featured a pit of vipers. And after that, it seemed every single night, my own floor was transformed into the same thing. And so I would wake up in the middle of the night, tangled up with my blankets, screaming, terrified, calling for help. And the same thing would happen. Half asleep from the room next door, I would hear my mom's groggy voice calling, you're okay, just come here. And I would scream louder, just come here, I thought to myself, with a pit of snakes between us? There is no just about that. I know from prior experience, it is only three bounding steps from my bed to the hallway and just a few more to their room. But when the floor is full of snakes, I'm not taking even one step. So I would pull the blanket tighter around myself and I would call out, no, I can't, you come here. Of course, my mom would respond, you're okay, just come here. And it would go back and forth. You can imagine it, us calling to each other back and forth. You come here. No, I can't. Come to me. I don't know how long it would go on. Some nights, honestly, I would be so tired, I would fall back asleep somewhere in the exchange. But there were other nights that I remember when I would hear the sound of relief. I would hear my mom nudge my dad awake and he would grunt half asleep, huh? I'm coming. I would listen as his feet shuffled through the hallway opening doors. I would hear him bump into the hallway or the dresser, still half asleep. And then he would open my door and he would come and he would be there full of compassion to soothe me. Me, so afraid I can't even take a single step. And yet there he was. He would come and he would flip on the switch to turn on the light and he would show me, reveal to me the same familiar brown carpet I have known all along. And he would come and kneel down by my side and he would soothe me with kind words, a gentle hand on the back, full of compassion. And he would tell me a different story, one that had nothing to do with snakes at all. He would kneel beside me and tell me stories about Winnie the Pooh until I fell back asleep peacefully. Today, we hear a story of Christ, the living God, Jesus, the one who is risen, coming to his disciples, full of compassion to soothe them where they are afraid. Last week, we heard the story, Jesus came to Mary in the place of her grief. This week, he comes to the disciples in their fear. It seems to me that the living Christ is on the move, is on the loose, and comes to seek disciples wherever they are found. And so today in the story, Christ comes like a compassionate father who comes to soothe and bring peace straight into fearful hearts. He does not come with a voice far off, you're okay. Just come find me. Instead, the disciples hear shuffling feet in their own hallways. The reassuring sound of the living Christ in their midst, right there, the one who comes, not far off, but to stand in their midst and say, here I am. Peace be with you. There is nothing half asleep 
about this story. And the truth is, when Jesus comes and offers peace, the circumstances of those disciples' fear has not changed. Their nightmare has not ended when the light switch flips on. They see no familiar brown carpet. Instead, the authorities who they feared are still in power. And yet, somehow, in this exchange, in this encounter, something is changed in the holy presence of the living God. In this word of peace that is offered to them, something is different. When they see the hands where human fear left its scar, they see hands that are now somehow healed. The mark of fear overcome by God's glorious power. And when they see, they are transformed. Their fear somehow gives way to joy. They are filled with joy. Though the circumstances remain, it seems God's peace has transformed something in their own hearts, in their own lives. Now they can see the possibility of another story beyond their fear, beyond their nightmare, another ending one that has nothing to do with those Jewish authorities they fear so much right now. Suddenly, they can see another ending, another story, the one marked by God's victory, the one marked by God's kingdom come, a kingdom of peace, of love, of forgiveness, of joy where fear once held so fast. This, my friends, is the story of God who in God's infinite goodness comes to bridge the impossible gap of our fear. This is the story that reminds us that the risen Christ comes to meet us wherever it is that we call out, wherever it is that we cry out. He comes to soothe us with a word of peace that transforms our own hearts our own lives. He comes to stand in our midst, arms open wide, to give us a new story to replace the old fearful one, a story of God's kingdom, of peace, of forgiveness, of joy that yet's to be fully revealed. Once more, God does not wait for us, but instead comes to seek us out. God does not wait for the disciples to get brave enough to leap from their beds and risk it to unlock the doors behind them. Instead, the living Christ comes and enters into that fearful locked in space. God comes to seek us out like those disciples to bring comfort, a word of peace that will transform in our own hearts if it does not yet transform all circumstances. That's the power of the spirit that Christ gives next. That having been transformed, we can work with the power of the spirit to transform the world, the circumstances around us to empower us into our next faithful step, our next faithful witness, which begins sometimes behind locks doors, but never stays there. Today, my friends, I find hope. I find hope in this story, which is a story about Christ who is willing to enter in to the locked in fearful places. I take hope in the reminder that the peace of Christ does not abide by a stay-at-home order, even as we do for the well-being of the community. The peace of Christ is on the loose, waiting to surprise us, to interrupt us, shuffle into our hearts and lives with a reassuring word, peace be with you. 
today, I am reminded that the fear cannot keep those first disciples from God's mission any more than our fear or our quarantine can keep us from ours. Here, behind locked doors, where masked faces stare back, the living Christ is already bold to enter, waiting to come, to be seen, to be present, to bring peace that transforms fearful hearts, my fearful heart, to empower faithful disciples to go in the next faithful step. We do not have to wait for our nightmares to end. We do not have to wait for a new normal to set in. The living Christ is here, it is now, in the places of fear, in the places of unknowing, to give peace in the very midst of them, to make space for joy to flourish. Today, I am reminded by this story that I need only look. Open my eyes that fear has squeezed so shut to look and see and notice to let my compassionate father pull the blanket from my fearful face to see the living Christ in my very midst, to breathe fresh air of the spirit's own breath of peace, not the stale air of my fear. I need only look, see, breathe, notice. And maybe then, I think, I will notice the way eyes can still smile behind a mask. Maybe then I will notice the way Sasha's small body relaxes with a mama hug I offer half-heartedly or preoccupied. Maybe then I will breathe deeply after unknowingly holding my breath all day long in fear and uncertainty. Maybe then I will rejoice when recognition dawns on the other end of the phone and love is spoken in ordinary greetings. Oh, my friends, what joy awaits when I see and notice and imagine a story beyond my own fear. Maybe then I'll take note of the stories of all my neighbors who are doing good and kindness to one another. Stories of kindness that shows up on our doorsteps at just the right moment. Stories of generosity. Stories like the one our dear friend Nancy Price shared with me this week of an Easter that just felt off and down until one thing after another, after another lifted her spirit so high by the end, she could hardly imagine it. A well-timed call, an Easter egg from a granddaughter full of a scripture of hope, a meal delivered to her by other church friends. My friends, joy. Joy awaits behind the veil of our fear, and Christ comes in our midst to bring that veil down. And so, my friends, I think maybe it's not just a reoccurring nightmare, somehow worse than snakes. I think there is fear even in these locked-in places. I think there is joy. <laughs> Joy, even, in these locked-in places. My friends, today, let us take comfort in the reassuring shuffle of footsteps that bump in the hallway, declaring to us the living Christ in our midst, who comes to say, it's okay. I'm here. Peace upon you. My friends, let our hearts be transformed this day by that peace. Amen. Today, at this time that we would, when we are together, normally receive our offering, 
I want to share a story with you about one of the ways our offering is still going to do good work and ministry in the world. You remember in the story, the scripture, that the Holy Spirit comes on the disciples and Jesus would send them out to do the work of mission of God's kingdom come. One of the ways that we are still fulfilling that commission, even in the safety of quarantine, even with safe precautions, is through the renovation and work of God's garden. You know God's garden every year. We plant, we water, we tend, we uh, pick the harvest. And then that harvest goes to the food bank to those who are most in need, most vulnerable in our midst. This year, we have been renovating God's garden. I say we, it is a ministry of the whole congregation, even as there are hands who have done the hard labor. And I give thanks for those hands. But there are now 12 raised garden beds in our garden full of dirt ready to be planted. We are on the final stage of this project, which is installing drip irrigation system. All of this is in the hope that it will make our ministry, our work more fruitful, as well as more sustainable for the volunteers who tend to the garden. And all of this work so far has been done by folks, uh, the generosity of individuals to give towards it. It's been supported by our general budget. It's been supported by gifts from organizations and companies in the community that have offered things at discount or free to make it happen. And so today I want to remind you of this important work that is still happening. It is one of the things that the offering that we make goes to support the ministry of feeding those who are hungry. And so this day, as I encourage you to continue to give your offering, I would give thanks to you for your generosity. I would remind you of the ways we are still sent out into God's kingdom to tend to the least and the lost, to bring a word of hope and joy beyond fear. My friends, a reminder and that you can continue to give through mailing gifts or through our online option on our website. I give thanks to your gener for your generosity, and I invite you to continue to give with rejoicing as we hear this song of Easter joy. We come as people still bound together by the peace of Christ, the breath of spirit, to raise these, the prayers of our community before us. We say, Lord, in your mercy, and we respond, hear our prayer. Or Lord, full of grace, we give you thanks. And I invite those of you watching it live in real time to go ahead and use the chat feature to offer these responses to one another. We pray. First, we offer prayers for Yvette Warbonnet and her family as she grieves in the death of her dad, Dale Hall. Dale died earlier this week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
prayer that is lifted up by Michael Johnson. His boss's husband required emergency dental surgery earlier this week and is not doing well on the other side. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. A praise from Jody and Bob Bernson that their daughter Nicole had a healthy delivery and welcomed baby girl Molly Claire just before Easter. Lord, full of grace, we give you thanks. A praise from Sue Keen. We had been praying for her daughter, Molly's best friend, who is named Heather. And we are glad to report that Heather is recovering from COVID-19 and has reached a point where she is coming out of her quarantine. Lord, full of grace, we give you thanks and a praise that baby Kaylin, who we've been praying for, has graduated from the NICU. She went home this week with her family. Lord, full of grace, we give you thanks. Let us continue now in a spirit of prayer. Lord God, today we pray remembering the story of Christ who enters into fearful, painful, grief-filled places to bring a word of hope, to bring a word that makes space for joy, to bring a word that transforms to write a new story of your kingdom come. We remember that you are bold to enter into these places to redeem them, restore them, renew them to life, resurrect them with the holy breath of your spirit. Today we pray that we too would be bold, bold to look beyond our fear, to see the joy that waits, bold to hope in the next day and the life that yet flourishes, bold to wait through our impatience to see the places where you are already tending to us here and now. Today we would pray a bold prayer that you would continue to intervene in our world to bring peace that you would empower us, breathe the Holy Spirit on us again, wherever we are, that we might go wherever we go as witnesses of your good news. We pray a bold prayer of protection for all those who still are working, for those who are still facing exposure to a virus for those who work and labor on our behalf. Lord, protect them, keep them safe, keep them healthy. Lord, we pray for those continuing to research, to seek vaccines, to seek treatments that are effective, to seek ways in which we can renew our community life together. Make answers known, intervene when there are none to make them seen. Lord God, for all who grieve, we pray the bold prayer that your peace and your comfort be real to them. In the depths of grief, we know that that is a bold, a bold prayer indeed. And yet we offer it in the hope that you still enter into those places. And so bring comfort on broken hearts. Bring hope to broken lives. Bring rejoicing for those who mourn and for those who fear. Help us to see the places you are yet sending us out, even as much of our work is still from our own homes. Reveal to us new opportunities to be part of the story of your kingdom come. All this we pray in the name of Christ, you who came to stand in our midst, who offered the power of the Spirit to unite us. 
And now we are united and lift our many voices as one as we pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, when Jesus came and stood among the fearful disciples, it didn't immediately change the circumstances, but it did transform their own hearts, their own lives. Something changed in that moment. Their fear gave way to joy. And so the power of the peace of Christ is the power to transform our hearts too. So that then we can participate with the power of resurrection to change the circumstances that still bring fear. So today, my friends, may we be people changed by God's peace wherever that peace finds us. The peace of Christ be with you. Amen.